It's after Thanksgiving, and that means it's officially the holiday season. So this week, I have five free holiday stinger transitions for you to use on your live stream to help you get in the holiday spirit. They look something like this. and they are completely free to use, no strings attached. All you have to do is download the files from the Discord, link in the description, and follow along if you don't know how to add custom stingers in OBS. I've also uploaded all of the Blender files and image sequences if you wanna make changes, learn from my work, or just add audio. We'll cover that too. And if you enjoy these kinds of free graphics, the absolute best way to show your support for the channel is to hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell. It's completely free, it really helps me out, and most importantly, it lets you know when there's cool new stuff to check out on the channel. That being said, let's get started. My name is Chris Folia, I'm your Stream Scholar. Welcome to Stream School. So adding a custom stinger transition to OBS is super easy to do. All you have to do is come down here where it says scene transitions. You're gonna to wanna to click the drop down, and you might have to scroll down a little bit to find add stinger. You're gonna to wanna to click that, and when this window comes up, you can name your stinger whatever you want. So I'm gonna call mine Hungry Santa. Then I'm gonna hit okay. So when this window pops up, you're gonna to want to click the browse button and find whichever stinger transition you want to use. So I'm gonna use the cookie grab stinger, so I'm gonna double click that one to bring it right on in. So if we preview our transition right now, you're gonna notice that the scene swaps and then the animation plays, which is not exactly what we want. We want the scene to transition when the entire screen is covered by the animation. So to do that, we're gonna have to change the transition point. And over here, you'll notice in the file name that I put 2000 MS. That is the transition point or where OBS actually swaps the scene. So under transition point, we're gonna change that to 2000 milliseconds. And if we preview our transition now, you'll notice that the animation wipes on and then the scene swaps behind the scenes when the entire screen is covered. So if we hit okay, now you'll notice if we click any of our scenes, it's gonna transition using the cookie stinger that we just added. But let's say that you want a different transition for a different scene. To do that, we're gonna use something called a transition override. And to add one of those is also super easy to do. So we're gonna go back to the dropdown, go back to add stinger, and I'm gonna call this one snow day. Then I'm gonna hit okay, click browse, and here, let's use the snowflake stinger. So if I double click that one to bring it in, you're gonna notice that it has a different transition point of 3,218 milliseconds. So I'm gonna change the transition point to 3,218. And now if I hit preview transition, you'll notice that the snowflakes come on and when it covers the screen entirely, that's when the scene swaps. So that being done, we're gonna hit the okay button. And over here, you'll notice that every single scene is now using the Snow Day Stinger we just added. That's because that's the one that's selected in the dropdown right here. So if we want the Cookie Stinger to be the main transition and Snow Day to only be on a select scene, we can click the dropdown, select Hungry Santa to use that as our main transition, and then we can right click the scene where we want the transition override, click transition override, and then select whichever stinger we want to use. So here I'm gonna click snow day. So now if I go back to the tutorial scene, it uses the cookie stinger, but if we click on the face cam scene, now it uses the snowflake stinger transition. And that is pretty much all there is to adding stinger transitions in OBS. Now adding sound effects to one of these stingers is a little bit more complicated, but also pretty easy to do. So in Blender, you're gonna wanna click off of the splash screen, go over here to the printer icon and click it. Then where it says frame rate, you're gonna wanna change that to 60 frames per second. If you leave it at 24, your stingers are gonna play back pretty slowly, which we don't want. Then up here on the camera icon, you're gonna wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says color management. You're gonna wanna drop that down 
and you're going to want to change view transform from filmic to standard. That'll make sure that the colors of the stingers stay vibrant the way they're supposed to. Then you're going to come all the way up here to the left hand corner, click the drop down, and you're going to want to change this window to a video sequencer. Uh, then in the video sequencer, you're going to click this drop down that says sequencer, and you want to change that to sequencer slash preview. That'll let you see your stinger transition as you're adding audio to it. So to add an image sequence, which you can also download from the link in the Discord, go up here to add, click on image sequence, and then you're going to want to find the folder that has all of the images in it for the stinger that you want to use. So for the snowflake stinger, I'm going to double click that folder and you'll notice there are like 360 images here. So I'm going to hit A as in Apple on my keyboard and you'll notice that all of them highlight in blue. That means I've selected all of my image files. So then if I hit add image strip, you'll notice that we get this long brown ugly bar at the bottom here in the sequencer. And that is our image sequence. So if we hit space to play this, uh, you'll see that our stinger transition plays back as it's supposed to, albeit a little bit slowly because it's caching all of the frames into memory or RAM. And you'll also notice that the stinger cuts off early, so it cuts off while there are still snowflakes on the screen, which we don't want. So to fix that, we're going to have to change the frame range. So I'm going to hit space on my keyboard to pause the animation. And then I'm going to scroll out on the sequencer using my middle mouse wheel to zoom out. And I'm going to grab the playhead and move it all the way to the end of the stinger transition where the screen is entirely transparent. So to see what frame this is, you just have to look at this little box in the lower right hand corner. So this stinger transition ends at 360 frames. So where it says start and end, I'm going to want to change the end box from 250 to 360. Hit enter to apply that. And now if I hit space to play this, you'll see that it plays through the entire image sequence rather than cutting off early. Now to add sound effects to this, you just have to go back up here to the upper left, click on add and click on sound. Then you're going to want to find whichever sound effect you want to use. So I want to use snow audio. So I'm going to double click on that to bring it in. And you'll notice that brings in a nice teal box here. That is our sound effect. And I can click on that and I can drag it around wherever I want in time or vertically because we have multiple tracks and layers. So if I put this sound effect right here, uh, then go back to the start of the timeline by hitting shift left arrow or just clicking and dragging the playhead back to the beginning. You can hit space on your keyboard to play it. It's snowing outside. And you'll notice that we have the audio playing. So because we have multiple tracks or layers, we can add multiple stacked sound effects, as many as you want to. So if I want to add a second sound effect, I just have to go back up to add, click on sound, and now I'm going to add my second sound effect. And I'll put this one on the same track, but a little bit closer to the end on the second half of the stinger. So now if I play this stinger by hitting space on my keyboard, it's snowing outside. Look at that snow. We have both of our sound effects playing with our stinger transition. So the final step here is going to be to export this as an actual WebM video file that we can use. And to do that, you're just going to come back over here to the right, click on the printer icon, and then under output, we have a lot of settings to change. And if you want more details on these, I have an entire video covering file formats in Blender. Uh, but we're going to want to change the file format to FFmpeg video. Then where it says encoding, we're going to drop that down and we're going to want to change the container to WebM. So it'll be an actual WebM file. And then we want to change the video codec to WebM slash VP9. And if we were to render this out right now, you would notice that one, it doesn't have audio and two, it's not transparent. So to fix the transparency issue where it says color, you're going to want to change that from RGB to RGBA. It's selected when it's blue. Then to add audio to this, to actually render it out with audio, we have to select an audio codec. And I've personally found that for WebM, uh, Vorbis works pretty well. So down here where it says audio next to audio codec, 
click the drop down and change that to Vorbis. Now to actually export this, you're gonna go under output and click the little folder icon and just choose a location for this on your hard drive. So I'm gonna put mine somewhere around here and I'm gonna call this Snow Audio Stinger. Uh, then I'm going to click accept and this file does not exist yet. This, pro this part of the process is just choosing where it's going to be on the hard drive when it's done. To actually create the video file, you have to come all the way up here to the left hand corner, click on render and click on render animation. And as soon as you click that, you'll get a big window that pops up and you'll notice that it starts to slowly play through the image sequence. This is creating every single frame of the video file. So you have to wait for this to completely play through the entire image sequence. And once it's done, or once the little green bar on the icon on your taskbar has finished going across, uh, you'll have a WebM file exactly where you specified in the output directory to use as a stinger transition in OBS. And that is pretty much all there is to adding audio to one of these stingers in Blender. Hopefully you have as much fun using these stinger transitions as I did making them. If you wanna see how I make this stuff, I've been streaming art a lot more lately over at twitch.tv slash oraclefishlive. And if you found this video useful, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below the video and ring the bell for new content every single week. Until next time, my name is Chris Folia. I'm your stream scholar, class is out.